Hi, this is Mr. Max. So I have given some questions on simultaneous equations today to the grade tens. This is work that um, you can also use in uh, in grade eleven and so on. So let's look at the few questions that I have and the way that I expected you to answer. Of course, there are many ways that you can solve simultaneous equations. So. Here I'm going to make x the subject of the formula. So that means I'm going to say 7y upon 3. And I'm going to take this value and I'm going to substitute it everywhere where I have an x into the second equation. That means here. Okay, so that becomes, I'm just going to write it here. It's going to be 12y equals to 5 minus 1. So in here, I'm going to have my 7y over 3. So, eventually, if you multiply out, you should have 35y over 3. Just want you to, to take note that um, once you multiply things like 5 times 7y over 3, you know, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. That's how I got to this. And then you're going to have 12y. You want the terms that have got the y on one side. Okay, so you're going to subtract because it's a positive term. Now, once you are here, you will realize and you grab your calculator that you're going to have one third y is equal to negative one. Right, so from here on, it's actually a little bit straightforward. In order for you to solve this equation, you're going to multiply both sides here by three. So y will be negative one times three. So my value of y is therefore negative. So if I get to this part and I want to find the value of x, I will substitute the value of y, which I got as negative 3, here. And you can go ahead and grab a calculator and you should get negative 7 as an answer there. Okay, right? So this is the way that particular question. There are many ways, as I say, where, that you can solve simultaneous equations. It's totally up to you which one works best for you. Now, when I look at the second one, I'm going to decide to make x the subject of the formula here because it's easier to use substitution method. So I'm going to take that 4y and it becomes a minus 4y. So everywhere in the first equation, we have an x like here. I'm going to substitute that x with that particular expression. So let me just get that right there. So I have my minus 15 minus 4y. So I must always do that in the second equation. Can't do it in the same equation. I made x the subject here. So I must substitute into the other equation. And you should go ahead and label the equations if you want to. All right. So this is going to be minus 30 here and minus 8y plus 3y equals to 0. So you have got minus 8y plus 3y equals to positive 30. I hope you understand that. You have minus 5y equals to 30. So y then should equal to 30 divided by negative 5, meaning that y is negative 6. Now that you know what y is, you can actually find the value of x by substituting negative 6 into the formula where you make x the subject. It's very easy. You can obviously use um, the original equations, but this is much better. So once you do this here, you're going to get a value where x is equal to, and you go, go ahead and use your calculator, okay? And then you should get answer like 9. So x is 9 and y is negative 6. You see also the papers that uh, these questions were taken from. So here do we have another one here. Again, um, it's totally up to you which methods you prefer. So what I'm doing, I am going to make the coefficients here of the x's to be the same. So if this is my first equation and that is my second equation, then I want to make the coefficient of x the same. So I'm going to multiply my second equation by 2. 
So my first equation remains 4x minus y equals to 9. But when I double this, every value will change. So I'm going to multiply here by 2, that by 2, and that by 2. So I'm going to have 4x, that is 2x times 2, and minus 6y, that is the 3y here, minus 3y times 2. And then that gives me negative 46, okay? You can actually go ahead and call this C if you want to. And that one was just my A. Right, so I can eliminate by subtracting equation C from equation A. That means, and you must be careful once you do your subtraction. So that means my Y, my X will eliminate. But here you have negative 1 minus negative 6. That gives you a positive 5y. I hope that you get that in order. When you do the numbers, you have 9 minus negative 46. That's going to give you, and take out your calculator, a positive value of 55. Now that you have that, you can actually determine the value of y, which would be 55 divided by 5, and y, therefore, will be 11. So if y is 11, okay, just make my 11 nicely, then you can actually now calculate the value of x. So that means you go back to your original equations, and you can decide in any one of those equations, you're going to substitute the value of y in there. So I'm going to take 4x minus y equals to 9. So I'm going to have 4x minus my y value now is nothing but 11. So this is 4x equals to 9 plus 11. So this is going to give me 4x is equal to 20. Therefore, x will be 20 divided by 4. That should give you the value of x as nothing but 5. So whatever methods you are using, you should arrive at this particular answer. Okay. So I know it was intense, and I know it is a little bit uh, tricky to a certain extent, but we should be able to get to the same answers, no matter the methods that we're using. Right, so I have another uh, pair of equations here. Well, you have to be smart. What is the method that you are going to use? Right, I see here I've got a 4y, and I've got an 8y, negative 8y. So I'm going to make the one on top, let's say... I'm going to multiply this whole equation on top by 2, so that that can be an 8y, okay? So 3 times 2, that gives you 6x. 4 times 2, that will give you positive 8y. And obviously, 1 times 2, that gives you 2. Right, let me just go ahead and write the other one down, as it was. Right, so if I was to eliminate, my signs are different. Some people will make the signs, they will force them to make them the same. But my signs, this is a positive here, and that's a negative there. So my signs are different. And if your signs are different, you add. And I hope that everybody gets that. So when you add, this is going to give you 11x. Obviously, when you add positive 8 minus 8, you get 0. And 2 plus 9, that gives you 11. So it's actually easy for us now to calculate the value of x. So x then should equal to nothing but 1. So if you have your value of x, now we use any one of these equations in order for us to find the value of y. So 5 times 1, which is the value of x, minus 8y is equal to 9. So this gives you 5 minus 8y equals to 9. So that's negative 8y equals to 9 minus 5. So this is negative 8y equals to minus 4. Not minus 4, rather, but positive 4. Just hope that you understand that. So once you look at this particular case, you will have y equals to 4 divided by negative 8, which is actually the same as negative a half. Okay? So the value of y, then, becomes negative 0.5 or negative a half. Now, someone might ask me, what if I decided that I'm substituting the value of x in this equation, 3 
times 1, which is the value of x, plus 4y equals to 1. Am I going to get to the same answer? So this gives you 3 plus 4y equals to 1. That is 4y equals to 1 minus 3. So that's 4y equals to negative 2. So you will see that from here, you'll have y equals to negative 2 divided by 4, which is the same as y equals to negative a half. So you will end up getting the same results, no matter in which equation you do your substitution of the value that you have, right? So any one of those equations will give you the answer, the same exact answer, once you have calculated. So there are many ways you can do this, all right? That was just one of the obvious ways that I was using. Now I brought in some word problems. They say the wage bill for eight men. So eight men, I'm using him, and three women is 6,100. That could be my first equation. Then five men and six women, that has 6,700. So once you now have created your two equations, it's now up to you to decide what to do, okay? So I'm going to look at this equation. And I have a 6w and a 3w. So if I multiply this equation here by 2, all right, so that's going to give me, now everything should be multiplied by 2. So this 8 becomes 16m plus 6w, that is that 2 times that, okay? And another thing, 6,100 times 2, well, you can grab your calculator, that's 12,200, okay? So the other one, you can just write it as it is, it's 5m plus 6w equals to 6,700. Okay, so now I have my two equations there. And I can eliminate by subtracting, because the signs are the same, so these w's will cancel. Okay, and once you do 16m, um, take away 5m, well, you're going to be left with 11m. And now when you do this big number, take out a calculator, you should get 5,500. Okay, so 11m is equal to 5,500. So therefore, m would be that 5,500. You divide that by 11. Okay? So the answer should not be nothing but, I hope you guess it, 500. Okay? So m, therefore, is nothing but 500. So once we have m, we can actually calculate w. So I'm going to substitute in any one of the two equations. Okay? Uh, to just make space here because it's a little bit big. So that it is a bit better, so I'm going to substitute it into the first one. It doesn't really matter, okay? Um, so we know that the value of m now is nothing but 500. So 8 times 500 is 4,000 plus 3w equals to 6,100, okay? So 3w will equal to 6,100. Oh, that's a big number. Let's just correct that, it's supposed to be. Even that one looks a little bit um, on the other side of things. So that's 6,100. And you take away 4,000 here. So you're going to have 3W is equal to, well, if you take away 6,100, subtract, you get 2,100. So I'm running out of space. What I'll do is W is then 2,100. Then you divide it by 3. Well, you should get to 700 as an answer. Okay, so the two values that we're looking for is 500 for the men and 700 for the women. That is the amount of money they must pay. Well, question six, relatively straightforward. The difference between two numbers, so let the numbers be x and y. So the difference x minus y is 7, so therefore x is the bigger number. The next one says 3 times the bigger number is equal to 72. Right, so... This other one, you can actually go ahead and you can solve this one. So here, x will be 72 divided by 3. You can actually calculate the value of x. And x here is 24. So x is 24. Calculate it. Now, you substitute into the other equation. So it's 24 minus y is equal to 7. So that I can find out what the value of y will be. So I have minus y equals to now you have to be a bit careful with this one. You get nothing but negative 17. Okay? So y will be negative 17 divided by negative 1 because there's a negative 1 here. 
So that means the value of y is nothing but 17. So these are the two equations, and that's how you solve them. This one is a little bit straightforward. Right, so I have got two more or a few more. So this is a word problem. So one of the things you should realize is that opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. Okay, so 3x minus 2y should equal to 11. That is my first equation. So these two sides here are also opposite. Therefore, they are also therefore equal. So you have got two equations. So the only problem you have with your equations is that the coefficients are not exactly the same. So if I was to make, the say, the coefficient of x the same, I will multiply this equation here by 2, and I will multiply this equation by 3 so that I can make the coefficient of x to be the same. So if I multiply everything there, I'm going to get 6x minus, and 2 times 2 gives you minus 4y, and 11 times 2, that gives you 22. So when we do the second one, 2x times 3, that gives you 6x. And minus 3 times that gives you minus 9. And 4 times 3 gives you 12. Right, so I can eliminate my values of x by subtracting the two equations from each other. The x and 6x will cancel. So be very careful. Negative 4 minus negative 9 is nothing but 5y. And 22 minus 12 is nothing but 10. So therefore, y will be 10 divided by 5. So we can actually get my value of y. So y then is nothing but 2. Now that I know what the value of y is, I can substitute y in any one of my equations in order for me to determine the value of x. So I'm going to use this equation. I'm just going to write it down here. So it's 3x minus 2y is equal to 11. We know that y is equal to 2. So that means if I want to calculate the value of x, so that will be 3x minus 2. And obviously, the value of y, we said y is nothing but 2. So that's 3x minus 4 is equal to 11. So that's 3x is equal to 11 plus 4. Okay, so that gives you 3x is equal to 15. Therefore, the value of x will be 15 divided by 3. And 15 divided by 3 is nothing but 5. So these are the two solutions to this equation. Well, let's look at uh, this one. Have a little bit of an age problem. In nine years' time, a mother will be twice. So let's say the mother's age will be, let's say it's X. And let's say the son, his age should be represented by the letter Y. In nine years' time, that means in the future. The mother at nine years, the son at nine years. Okay, because in nine years' time, it doesn't mean the son's age is stopping. All right. Um, what does the question say? The mother will be twice as old as her son. So let's just create an equation here. So this is going to be x plus 9 is equal to 2y plus 18. I hope you know how I got to that 18. So I'm going to rewrite my equation so that I have got my equation in the form ax plus by is equal to c. So this is going to be x minus 2y equals to 18 minus 9. So my equation is x minus 2y equals to 9. So this will be my first equation. So the second equation, the second sentence, it says three years ago, that is in the past. So once you look at three years ago, then three years ago, the man will be three years whatever, younger. The son will also be three years whatever, younger. But they say the mother is four times as old, put that always at the small age. So once you manipulate this, you get 4y minus 12. And I hope you still remember how I got to that. And this is x minus 4y equals to negative 12 plus 3. When that negative comes over, okay, 
So you have got x minus 4y is equal to negative 9. So that is my second equation. So I'm going to take those two equations and I'm going to solve them simultaneously. So the first equation, and you can go ahead and write it. So the first equation is x minus 2y is equal to 9. The other one is x minus 4y is equal to negative 9. Right, so we can actually eliminate the x's. Once we eliminate the x's, we can do that by cancelling, and that is by subtracting. When you cancel, that cancels. Here must be but careful. Negative 2y minus negative 4 is 2y. And 9 minus negative 9, the same as 9 plus 9, is 18. So y is equal to 18 divided by 2. So therefore, y is equal to 9. So that means that the age of the sun, okay, that we have here, the age of the sun is 9. So the sun is 9 years old. So we can actually calculate the age of the mother. And in order for me to find the age of the mother, I'm going to use this value here. I can use x minus 2. And we know that the sun is 9. So if the sun is 9, then I can find the value of x. My x is represented by the mother. Okay? So you can also use this in this other equation. You'll get the same answer. So this gives me x minus 18 equals to 9. That is x equals to 9 plus 18. Well, this is going to give you nothing but 27. Okay? So sun is 9 years old. Mother is 27. Okay, this question really had the learners scrambling for assistance and uh, most of them could not get this answer. All right, so I hope that you read it carefully. There are 50 donkeys and chickens. So let me use D for donkeys. And let me use C for chickens. I hope everybody get that. There are 50 animals all together. So D plus C is equal to 50. That can be my first equation. There are a total of 174 legs. Now, you need to understand something. A donkey has got four legs. A chicken has got two legs. And all of them is 174. Okay. So, from here, there are many ways you can solve this. So, I'm simply going to make this equation a little bit interesting for me. I'm going to divide this equation by 2. I'm going to half it. So, that means I'm going to divide there by 2, divide here by 2, divide here by 2. So, that's going to give me 2D plus C is equal to... Now, a half of that is nothing but 87. Then I'm going to write my other equation, which is D plus C, that's equal to 50. Now, I can solve them simultaneously by eliminating my C's. Once you eliminate the values of C by subtracting, the C's cancel. And 2D minus D is just going to be D. And 87 minus 50, well, that's about 37. So there are 37 donkeys. So in the farm, there are 37 donkeys. So we can go ahead to our, one of our... Equations which say D plus C is equal to 50. So we know there are now 37 donkeys. So how many chickens are there going to be? In order for us to find the chickens, we take away 37 from 50. Okay. And once you do that, you'll get an answer of 13. So there are 13 chickens at the farm. So you, the, the objective for you was to find a way to create these two equations. And once you have created those two equations, now you are then asked to find the missing values. How many donkeys there are and how many chickens there are. Right, the last question here under simultaneous equation at a hotel night. So you have got 260 rooms. Some of these rooms are single rooms. Some of them are double rooms. So I'm going to use the letter S for single rooms 
I am also going to use the letter. Let's just make sure our spelling is correct. I'm going to use the letter D for double rooms. All in all, single plus double, there should be 260 rooms. Okay, so that's one equation. Another equation says that the single room costs 35. So 35S plus the double room, they cost 60, 60 D, and all in all, 14,000. That's my thing. Okay, so this is many ways how you can find this particular. But you can simplify this if you want to. But I'm going to take a slightly different approach. As long as you create a equation, you should not have a problem. Here, I'm going to make S the subject of the formula. So that is 260 minus D. And this 260 minus D, I'm going to substitute it here when I have on the next one. So that's 35 plus 60 D equals to 14,000. Okay, so uh, totally up to you which method, as long as you have your two equations. So that's 260 minus D. You have to perhaps grab your calculator, yeah? So when you multiply 35 times 260, you should get something in the 9,000 region, so it's 9,100. Minus 35D plus 60D equals to 14,000. Right, so once you are taking care of your D's, here you will have 25D, and then you have got 14,000 minus 9,100. So you have got 25D is equal to, now when you two, subtract those two, you get nothing but 49,000. Now once you have got that answer, you can divide everything by 25, so D is going to be 49,000 divided by 25, so the D should give you 196, so there are 196 double rooms. Now it's just a matter for us to find our single rooms. So I'm going to go all the way then to this formula here. I'm going to take this formula here. The S, though it's easy, S plus D equals to 260. So, um, or, in fact, I can even use this particular formula here. So let's just make sure. I want to use this one in order for me to find my S. Well, S is equal to 260 minus D. It's totally up to you. So, to find the single ones, S will be 260 minus D, and we know our D is uh, nothing but uh, 196. So when you take away 196 from 260, well, you can grab your calculator, you should get about 64. All right, so there are 64 single rooms, 196 double rooms. Okay, so I know that it looks like uh, I was rushing through this stuff. You have the beauty of pausing uh, the video and trying to work out these questions on your own. Um, but that is the crux of the matter. If simultaneous equations, you should be able to do various ways and methods, not just stick to one method that you are used to. Okay? And uh, do more exercises, and then you're going to get better at it. Good luck with your studies.